Hey guys, Crewman here. And since I started releasing shorts and videos on the BC250, this has been the most requested video. A review, my opinion on the BC250 and if you should buy it or not. For less than the price of one of these, a 4070 Ti Super, you can actually get 12 of these things. <laughs> you can get 12 BC250s plus the server case, the power supplies, the fans, and everything else you need to mine on them. This thing right here represents either the best dollar per hash on the market by far, or a giant waste of time, depending on who you ask and how you look at it. So to help you understand all the pros and cons of this thing and this and the rig itself right back there, stay tuned to this video and I'll explain them along with my opinion on whether or not you should buy one of these or let's let it be someone else's problem. So before you buy a BC250 and before we even approach hash rates or profitability, there are a few things you need to know, almost like disclaimers before you buy these things. The first thing that I think is obvious, but people need to hear it, is each one of these BC250s are their own PC. They have their own Ethernet cable, they have their own USB ports, and they even have a display port. You can see them all right here, as well as having their own M.2 drive. So in order to run one server case full of BC250s, you need one memory drive, whether it be a USB thumbstick or uh, an M.2 drive, one ethernet cable, and then you need a display port to connect to each one of these to boot them individually. And I think you guys really need to watch my setup video on these before you uh, keep going with this review or right after this review, you'll see a link right above here because these are not easy to set up. Also, these will not work on Windows. I've tried. I mean, they'll boot into Windows, but you cannot get the GPU working as I cannot find any drivers for them, and I doubt AMD will give us any drivers for them. Uh, I dug around forever, and I had, I had no luck. So these basically only work on Linux. And yes, you will need a separate instance of each one to get them work, working. Uh, Son of a Tech did a great uh, explanation in his video which I'll link down below, and you should definitely watch it before buying one of these as well, uh, and basically said that Hive is working on a price structure for the BC250s, but as of now, you are literally paying for each one of these. So you're paying for 12, I mean, I guess eight, because the first four would be free. Eight different instances of these to get them mining. So that's something you need to consider as well. Um, I am hopefully working on a, another alternative with a Linux mining OS, uh, it's still in the very, very early stages, and I don't really have much to say on it. Uh, it's basically trying to get the Flux OS or the Flux mining skin working over Linux OS, uh, and hopefully I'll have more information on that in the coming weeks. The next thing you need to know is in order to really make these things profitable, you need to mine on both the CPU and the GPU, as they are basically a Ryzen 3600 and a 50, an RX 5700 non-XT strapped together. And the average power consumption of these things is about 160-ish watts at the wall for yes power, which is a CPU algorithm, and it's the most profitable one on the BC250, and a core algorithm, uh, say Iron Fish, or Lithium, or, or whichever one you want. I got them all. I also got this thing running at about 200 uh, watts-ish on Kapow. Uh, however, the unit in review comes with two 1200 uh, watt PSUs, which cannot run all 12 of these safely. It can't do it. So running 11 of these on core algorithms and yes power gives you about 2000 ish watts. I think it was like 20, 2050 when running the fans at around 70%. Uh, and it was very cold when I ran these tests. So the warmer it gets, obviously the more power it uses, which is borderline, which is over the 20% rule by about a hundred watts. So I would only run 10 of these at a time unless you swap these power supplies over to 1400 watts, which I plan on doing in the future. Now, finally, the fans. I want to give you guys a warning. Five, four, three, two, one. Did you hear those fans? How loud they are? So, so loud. I could literally hear them from my shed into my from my shed into my house.
the edge of my house, but still. And you would not be able to put these in your home unless you lower the fans quite a bit, which as you've seen on my shorts, I'll also link those down below. I couldn't figure out for the life of me. I tried so many different things. And thank you so much to Rondi. You are a lifesaver, brother. I figured out that you see the very, very back one right there, the furthest one in the back on this picture. That one controls the fans. So if you basically boot it up into the BIOS, you can lower the fans by about 70%. Again, I'll have a link on my short down below. And then they become much more reasonable. But had I not been able to fix this, this would have been a deal breaker for me in my situation. And I probably would tell most people not to buy these. So you have to lower the fans because they're, they're basically unbearable. They're worse than ASIC fans otherwise. Now, would these be home? Would you be able to put these in the home at about 70% fans? I think so, but you know, I, I'm not willing to take that chance. You might want to ask any, someone else who already has them to, to try to lower the fans and check it out. Um, and how will this affect their cooling in the summer? I don't know. When I lower them about 70%, they were about 60 degrees, which is pretty reasonable, but you got to remember my shed also was only like 50 degrees. Uh, maybe I'll crank up the fan. Maybe I'll crank up the temperature in the shed uh, and artificially test it. Uh, that might be a good thing for a short. So look for that one day coming up. Another thing you also, you're going to want to do is you're going to want to flip the fans. People say that you get better cooling for that. The reason I, however, flip the fans is because I needed to be able to access the, the ports on the aisle of my shed that I could get to. As like, if I would have put these like this, I wouldn't have been able to get to them. And I would have had to reach around to them like this and, or like this, and that would have basically been a nightmare. All right, so now that we've talked about all 5,647 disclaimers and things you need to know before mining with the BC250, let's talk about what everybody wants to hear about, and that's the profitability numbers. Now, first thing I want to tell you is I'm not doing hash rate breakdowns or anything like that. You can get all of those from Sonoma Tech's video that I already have linked down below. This is a pretty niche product and he's done a great job testing them. And if we're being quite honest, all of my results have uh, mirrored his, at least in the coins that I've attempted to mine, which is Alethium, Ironfish, and Vish AI. So the most interesting thing I want to say before I talk about profitability is remember, you have a CPU and a GPU in this thing. So keep that in mind as there's two ways to factor in profitability. And then another thing is let's talk about how much these things cost to run. These things cost to run per day if you want to look at how I calculate my numbers. Essentially, you can see the kilowatt hours over here. Uh, I, cal I got those by figuring out the power it used at the wall and the time it would be on per month. I used 31 days in a month. And then I also went over how much they would cost to run per day. So essentially, with my power rating, uh, I have 10 cents per kilowatt hour. So we take that number, we times that by 15, uh, 25.5, and we get $152 a month. We divide that by 31 days, comes out to $4.92 $4 a day to run these things. So how do I determine whether or not they're profitable? Well, there's multiple ways to do it, okay? Now, remember, I already said that the BC250 you can't really accurately measure how much these things use uh, in terms of GPU and CPU power. So the best way to determine profitability numbers on these things is to do as follows. You get the total breakdown per card, right? So you figure out how much they use per card. And that number comes out to uh, essentially since it is uh, 20, 2050, you divide that by 11, it's 186 watts. So one of the one example I did was you just look at the you look at the Vish AI numbers and they do 1.35 kilohash when mining when mining with uh, a, the GPU. So if you look right now, essentially these things break even on Vish AI. So it cost me four dollars and ninety one cents to mine with eleven of these. And I make, in terms of profit, because you see here I did the whole 186 watts here, I make like nothing. So I break even on the Vish AI, which means everything that I mine on the GPU side is profit. So like right now I'm spec mining iron fish on all of these because I just want to get some more iron. So if you look 
at my iron rate. Let me move my let me move my big beautiful body. Oh, sorry, let me get the camera. Let me move myself over. And you can see on iron fish right now, where are you beautiful iron? I get about four, uh, four giga hash and change on iron fish. So we're just using one watt and you see I make 10 cents a day. So essentially I'm making a dollar and 11 cents a day mining on this right now at 10 cents kilowatt hour, which some of you would say that's like nothing in terms of profitability, but Vish AI is down 20%. So obviously when it goes up, you make more money. And then another thing you got to consider, let's look at ASIC minor value and let's look at what some of these ASICs are making. Now let's not go with the ones that are dumb in terms of profitability, but let's look at one that's make that would cost within the $700 range. So I don't know, let's look at uh, an S19J Pro, right? That probably would be around there. It's making about $1.76 a day, very similar numbers. And now remember, this is before the Bitcoin halvening and once the halvening goes down, you know, prices obviously will go down. Whereas with the BC250, you can mine whatever you want. Now it's a lot of work to get these 11 cards mining, but you have a lot of flexibility and I'm pretty certain there's more profitable coins to mine on these than Ironfish. But for me, I'm just mining Ironfish. And remember, I can write my power bill off. So yes, I am mining with these things on Vish AI and I'm selling every day. But the way I look at it is I'm getting a free bag of Ironfish, however small it may be and I get you know more more power which I can write off and for me my, the more kilowatt hours I use the cheaper my rate is overall so it's a it's a big win win for me so you but my situation is not yours so you need to take that into consideration when figuring out if these things are profitable so with that said let's finally talk about if you should buy one of these things and honestly, the reason I bought one, messed around with it, put all the time into it, is they're so cheap. Like, they're, they're so cheap. I paid $740 USD tax after free shipping. I will put a link down below. It is an eBay affiliate link, so I will get part of eBay's commission if you buy one. Uh, so that would definitely help the channel. Uh, and these things are heavy. Again, watch that video. Uh, watch that video I had where I you see me lifting these things and I was like, oh! talking about how heavy these were and you also need other things to buy to get these things going you need either you either need to buy an m.2 adapter or a small m.2 drive which 128 gig ones cost about 12 dollars or so each or you buy a usb thumb drive which cost me about two dollars each so when you factor in the cost of the thumb drives and the cost of the ethernet cables you add another 40 or so dollars to it and then i want to re replace the server power supplies i want to go to 1400 watt power supplies so it'll probably cost another 60 bucks between the two so you're looking at probably like 850 dollars or so give or take which basically is the cost of one of these after tax so that's kind of crazy to me and the profitability numbers as of now are actually pretty similar why you buy these and why i think you buy these is i think you buy them for the future for the bull run what if another CPU mineable coin pops off? What if iron, what if any GPU mineable coin goes through the roof? Your profitability on the, these things could, could triple. You could be making five, six, seven, eight, maybe even $10 a month a day on these things, which would make them worth it. And then that would increase the resale value of these things by far. I mean, what do you think these things are going to go for in the bull run? And even if they don't resell for a lot, you literally paid the pro, the cost of one GPU for them. So I think it's going to be hard to get burned on them. So are they worth buying? I think if you look at them like an ASIC, as I said earlier, I think they're definitely worth buying. But if you look at it like an ASIC, can you mine with an ASIC in your house? And if the answer is no, then you probably shouldn't buy one because these are loud and they take a lot of work to get mining. And if Hive OS does not solve its pricing out, then they might not be worth mining with as Hive is basically the best thing to mine on. And when profitability is low, you know, you're going to, you probably, your profits probably going to get eaten up in your Hive OS fee. So is that worth it? Eh, it's another thing you got to think about. Another question people have asked me is, would I buy another one of these? Well, in my personal situation, I don't think I would because I am at full power in my shed and these things definitely aren't winning the efficiency of the year award. And I have enough power for like one of these or a 40 series rig. And while a 40 series rig costs a lot more money, I A, want to move my 40 series rig out of my garage 
and B, I, I, I mean, I just, I'm out of power. So if I'm, I want to use my power more efficiently and I do not think the BC250 is the way to go for me personally. But if you have the power and you want a cheap way to make a decent amount of money with a high upside, I really think these things are worth it. So again, in a nutshell, treat these, are, treat these like a cheap ASIC that can mine two algorithms at once and they can mine more than just one algorithm and you should be happy with the results. Don't mine with these in your house and you need to understand the risk going into them and you need to swap out the power supplies. So that's really it. Um, I mean, again, these things are crazy. I'm really glad I, I waited to do a review so I could properly give you my thoughts. So again, look at these like an ASIC and then that should give you a reasonable determination of whether or not you should be buying one of these. Was it worth it for me? Yes, would I buy another one? I don't think so. All right guys, with that said, there's a link down below if you wanna buy them, uh, remember, use my link it's an affiliate link it helps the channel and allows me to improve the content and give you better content and more content please like and subscribe to this video the march to 3000 continues i'm almost at 29,000 sub or 2900 subscribers i really want to hit that 3000 mark as fast as possible again thank you guys for watching please like and subscribe and i will be doing more bc250 content remember these things are ps5s i'm going to try to game on one all right guys thanks again for watching group man